title of my message today is your your breakthrough is in the house and it's coming from the story of Luke and it's a story of the birth of John the Baptist and I want to take his story and kind of break it down into four simple things if we get to the fourth one but three for sure um, and uh, I want us to take those lessons and equip you and encourage you and inspire you to live be and serve in the house of God amen story comes from Luke chapter 1 uh, Luke chapter 1 verses from f uh, 1, uh, 5 through 15 I'm not going to read all of it I'm just going to pick and choose my verses in verse 6 there's the Ze Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes carefully to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations they had no children because Elizabeth wasn't able to conceive and they were both a very old verse 8 and Zechariah was serving God in the temple as it was his duty that that, that week there are things that we go through in life that cause us reproach and that's and that's what this family was experiencing and uh, point number one is that you can be righteous but in reproach you can be righteous but in reproach you can be Christian you can be filled with the Holy Ghost you can be saved you can be serving God but there are areas in your life that are in reproach meaning there are areas in your life that are struggling there are areas in your life that 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 you don't see them working out there are areas in your life that are afflicted we see apostle Paul Bible says that you know Bible uh, we, we see from the Bible that Apostle Paul he was committed to the gospel of Jesus he was really committed to the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ and spreading the gospel and and preaching and serving the Lord to the point that he chose not to be married so that he can more effectively be committed to to spreading the gospel I mean that's that's a serious commitment and we learn from the life of Apostle Paul that even he had a thorn in his flesh he had an area in his life where, where he was afflicted so it is possible to serve God to love God and even walk righteously in his ways to to do all the things that you should do as 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 a Christian now we're not talking about perfection because perfection eludes us all uh, we are to strive for perfection but we will never reach perfection or, until we are perfected in his image in the afterlife But you can do all things right but yet have certain thing in your life certain things in your life certain area in your life that is defeated certain area in your life that is a struggle certain area that for other people comes naturally but for you you have to fight for it you have to fight through it and sometimes every day see uh, childbearing is a mostly a natural phenomena for a woman but for Elizabeth Bible says she wasn't able to have a child and you know it's a sometimes probably most disheartening thing to to find yourself in a situation where things for others come easy but you have to fight for it you have to wrestle just to make it for others it seems that you know they can just wake up and, and and roll into that area in their life and just 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 have it great but you have to wake up and struggle through it you have to wake up and get on your knees and ask God for mercy and favor to just make it through that area and my point is that is that that when you come to Christ oftentimes you are promised a better life but not always you get a better life now you do get an eternal life and that's the most important thing but there are times and there are areas in our life that we struggle in 
what I want you to see from this story is that it happens so don't be discouraged and almost all of us and I'll probably say with confidence that all of us we do have those areas in our life where we need the Lord the areas that for others come easy but we gotta fight through it maybe in your area that could be an area of finances for others it would be an area of healing for others it would be an area of, of loneliness depression for others it could be an area of having children while others don't know what to do with their children because they, they can't seem to stop making them uh, they're asking for another thing <laughs> For somebody else you know it seems like for another person it's just so easy to, to to get a relationship this seems like you know they should stop they should probably stop getting relationships because they go from one to another to another but for you you're you're praying and asking and you're fasting and and you're seeking the Lord and you're asking God just just send me one I'm not asking for many just one but I think all of us have these these certain areas and sometimes those seasons that we go through that it's just difficult it's difficult and 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 and, and there's almost seems like there's no explanation for it like why like I'm doing things correctly like I'm, I'm doing things right like I'm uh, you know but why these things are not working out and I want to encourage you I'm actually not here to tell you why I, I don't know why <laughs> If you're waiting for me to give you a secret how you know three easy steps to get out of your season I'm, I'm sorry but I don't have that uh, I wish I did I'm just here to encourage you to remain in the house of God we see we see in this story that the Zach Zacharias and Elizabeth if they had any reason to be discouraged and to stop serving God it would be them in the cult, in that culture in that day not having children was a as a sign of a curse it was a great reproach um, and uh, if they had a reason not to go to the temple of God if they had a reason not to serve God it probably would be them it probably would be them but they chose to stay in the house of God and they chose to serve in the house of God in spite of their uh, affliction they chose to minister to people because that's what the priests are that's their job their job is they they serve God and they minister to people my second point is that don't leave house of God and your service to God because of your disappointment there are two types of people there are people that because they got disappointed in a certain area in their life they prayed and prayed and prayed they believed and things didn't happen they prayed for healing for their mom and and, and she passed away and died they they believed for this breakthrough in their area of uh, finances in the area of business and that didn't happen and they got discouraged and they left uh, they were praying for promotion but they got even fired from the current job that they had and they they got disappointed and they physically left the house of God they, they abandoned the, the fellowship of the saints and uh, um, and if it's you that are watching online if it's you that are watching right now and you maybe stumble upon this video stumbled on this broadcast and you're listening to the sound of my voice listen to me you gotta come back to the house of God you gotta come back we don't serve God just because we get something from him we serve God because He is God. We've committed our life to God. We've committed our life to His, to His service. Not so that we get things from Him, even though we do get things from Him. And if you remember a message that I preached last, uh, He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He rewards those that serve Him. We do get benefits of serving God and being in the house of God. But we don't serve God because we get something. Because there were, throughout times in the history, if you were serving God, you actually would not get anything outside of being persecuted, beaten, thrown in jail, and, 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 and uh, 
excommunicated from the community, from certain benefits in community. And today people around the world, they are experiencing those things. And so by giving your life to God, they are not expecting anything but to suffer loss. But we serve God because for who He is. And we serve God because we're the reward that we get in eternity is much greater than the reward that we get here and Jesus warned us about said be careful that you only seek reward here because in this life this reward can be stolen the wrath uh, the moth uh, can uh, can eat it away where well, the, the thief can steal it it can rust away but our sight is set on the things above it's set on eternity because at the end of the day we will spend more time there than we will spend here okay if you left God if you left God's house maybe you came here today and then you're kind of still on the fence I want to encourage you come back to God come back what I mean by coming back to God come back to his house come back to his servant but there's another category of people here and those that are watching is that you maybe did not leave the house of God physically or did not leave abandon your calling in your service to God physically but you have done so emotionally and I've found myself in the past in in this state or in this season when you believe for something when you believe for that business to take off or or or, or that to receive that contract and things did not work out and then and you went bankrupt you lost the house you, you you lost your income or whatever it is you were believing for this for that you were believing for um certain thing in your life you will believe in for certain breakthrough in your life you will believe in for healing and uh, and it didn't come or it's not even there yet and emotionally while you're still healed physically but emotionally uh, what we call it, you got burnt out you got exhausted you got you 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 left service to God uh, while physically you still remained in the house of God I want to encourage you and I want to stir you up today as well this morning listen God sees you God sees your service God sees your commitment and God sees your problem and I'm not saying that after this message your problem would get solved I don't know but what I'm saying is that you have to serve God despite of your affliction you have to serve God despite of your sickness you have to serve God despite of your setbacks and disappointments you have to serve God despite of the fact that your family has still hasn't gotten saved your son is still uh, uh your son and your daughters are still hooked on drugs they still don't, don't don't serve God they're still not with your church you still have to you have to continually continually and get uh, to serve God with your passion with all of your heart because still, he's still God and your story is still not over. He's still God and your story is not yet over. Your breakthrough is in the house of God. Your healing is in the house of God. Your, 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 your uh, uh, blessing is in the service to God we see that in verse uh verse 7 it says that she wasn't able she was past it was way past the time of breakthrough it was way past the time of healing it was way past the, the new normal human abilities but there is always but God there's always when every time every time God is involved in your story every time God is involved in, in, in your life there's never an expiration for God's doing so I want to encourage those that 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 has that has um maybe you you've got burnt out you've got tired you you've got disappointed your things have been delayed in your life continue to serve God continue to serve his people continue to be in his house because this is where God will bring your answer this is where God will bring breakthrough in your life oftentimes breakthrough comes but people already left the house 
of God. After time breakthrough comes but people already left the place of, 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 of the place of waiting and expectation emotionally and they're not able to seize the moment. Don't leave the house of God. I remember I heard a story story from a, a, a person in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, she was testifying actually of her healing. She went to the doctors. She was already of, of, of uh, age. Well, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, this person, yes, she went to the doctors and uh, and she was discovered that she's in a late stage of cancer, uh, third or fourth stage of cancer. And they gave her a uh, few months to live at best. She was very disappointed and very crushed, uh, very crushed. And so somebody invited her to a somebody invited her to this uh, crusade to this service she went to the service uh, to this evangelical crusade service she got saved and she gave her life to Jesus and she just she just fell in love with Jesus and she honestly she was just she was happy that she would be going home soon but at the same time she was as she was happy she was uh, I think she was in her late 60s at this point she was also filled with regret that she wasted so much life so much time in her life not knowing God and not serving Him. So she just got so passionate and on fire she said look I have just few months left to live. I'm, I'm at least I'm gonna use those two months to serve God. At the best I can. My health is already failing me. I can hardly move around. So what she did is she lived in uh, one of those uh, multi-story buildings, uh, apartments you probably have seen so built back in the Soviet Union, Soviet Union times of 16, 20 stories, apartments everywhere and uh, at this point she already assigned her will her apartment her assets to her kids she spread you know she she did her will already knowing that she's passing away and uh, in these last two months she just said I'm just gonna do everything that I can in my power to serve God and let lead as many people to Christ and so in, due, in these two months she began to evangelize just literally knock on the doors and sharing the gospel of Jesus sharing what she experienced just just literally a few weeks ago few a month ago what she experienced what Jesus did for her and uh, and she continued to share a month went by uh, another month went by she started a home group in her apartment from all those people that got saved already into her thing three months went by four months went by she already now remember she's thinking she's gonna die she already raised up a leader so that the leader can take her take over her home group five months went by six months went by she had to split her home group because there's too you know too many people now she has two home groups that she's overseeing eight months go by and she's like I'm not dying what's happening I'm feeling good actually now remember the doctors already discharged her pretty much telling her do you got to go and make your things with your family and then pretty much spend last moments your family and die that was it that's all they could do so she decided to go back to her doctors and said listen um supposed to die six months ago like what's going on <laughs> and uh doctors examined her took her blood work sent her to all these things and uh, and after a while they came they came back and they said listen now like we don't know what's happening but you are recovering There's still a bit of trace of cancer in your life but but you are you are doing significantly better whatever you're doing keep doing so she continued on serving God continued on spreading the gospel in her old age late 60s became a, a leader of multiple home groups and eventually she was completely cured and healed and she lives till this day I want to tell you that don't wait till you get to that place where you are point of no return and say you know wasted all my life should have served God serve God today serve God today there's blessings in serving God there is there's things that you will tap into that otherwise you will not be able to 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 get there are things that you'll be able to receive from the Lord that otherwise you will not be able to to get don't leave the house of God despite of your reproach don't leave the service to God despite of your reproach because I want to tell you something that we read in Elizabeth and Zechariah's story is that we read down the verse that everybody heard of the miracle that they received Bible says they were in awe of what happened 
and they were and they were saying God has visited you God will visit you God will visit your family God will rewrite your story God will bring breakthrough in your life God will bring that healing into your life and God will will, will bring deliverance into your life but even if he doesn't when you cross to the other side you will be able to stand before him not with full of regret but full of gratitude and appreciation that you had a chance to be involved in his work that you had an honor to be involved that you did not waste your gifts you did not waste your talents you did not waste the time God has given you on this earth that you were able to do everything in your capacity despite of certain areas in your life that were struggling you gave it your all and oftentimes not oftentimes we see from the Bible that Jesus appreciates appreciated the gifts that were given to him that were given out of sacrifice remember the woman Mary remember that she gave she gave her best it was a sacrifice it was a sacrifice for her that service that we give God even despite of certain areas in our life being afflicted that's a that's a sacrifice that the Lord is very well pleased it's a sweet aroma to him and I want to tell you that God will locate you he will locate your story the point number three generational blessing come for the life of faithfulness see we all we all want generational blessings well I should say probably parents want generational blessing uh, young people unmarried people they're quite selfish in their own in their ways it's all about them their career and and then you know how to go further how to do things like that even if you think you're not selfish you're selfish trust me when you get a when you get when you have children um you know what I, you'll know what i mean your life your life becomes your life becomes about them yes you still have a life you still have a career you still have a calling but your life becomes about them your life becomes about how can I do my best to lay a foundation and to to give them the best place to start off in their life spiritually financially educationally emotionally you you really work you know if there was things in your life you ignored as a, as a single person you're like yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll deal with those later you had some anger issues you had some lack of patience you have this and that when you have when you have children it, it makes you think twice or, or ten times like do, do I really want to do that do I really because you know they're watching you know you're you're imprinting on them you know you are you you are um laying a foundation in their life that they're gonna start from and you want to give them the best chance in life because life is already full of challenges full of obstacles full of struggles life already throws a curving you know uh, what do they call it curveball into your life you know and, and you got to figure out how to swing and not miss and so you know when you when you become a parent it becomes very apparent to you that your life is different at that point you live differently you, you're consciously approach things differently and then I think every parent here would say yeah I, I, I want to pass on a generational blessing to my family but I want to tell you the generational blessings God doesn't just spread generational blessings like little uh, um, free treats to everybody generational blessing for you generational blessing to you and everybody else no generational blessings are special generational blessings belong only to those who commit a lifetime to his house and to his service I can go from story after story after story from the Bible and prove it to you and show it to you that generational blessing belong to those who commit their lifetime who are committed in the house of God in his service for a lifetime you know I stand here today and I've shared the story last uh last message that I was speaking to you know I stand here today um understanding that my life today I am where I am today not because of my own efforts not because of my smartness my 
my uh, my strength, my wisdom, my uh, uh, accolades, my my achievements. As a matter of fact, if it was left up to me, I prob I would definitely not probably definitely would have not been here. If it wasn't for the mercy of God in my life, I would not be here. I would not have what I have. I would not have the marriage, the family, the ministry, finances, the things that I have today because I was trying really hard to screw up my life. Some of you that know my story, you can say amen to that one. I see Larissa back there like, mm-hmm. Listen, my, my life, I understand that I stand on the shoulders of my parents and their lifelong commitment to serve God and I understand that even not just my parents my parents stand on the shoulder of their parents of my grandparents of a lifelong commitment to God my dad is a pastor and got a chance to minister around the world and, and raise up more, many churches and raise up this church and leaders and do what he is able to do not just because he's also great and he has these you know he has this discipline and this commitment in his life and all this stuff which he does have it but he also stands on the shoulder of his mom and dad who would not miss a service who three times a week right that you guys would walk seven ten miles Three times a week they would walk five seven miles you know many miles that we would not walk today to church spend three four hours there and walk back with 16 children I mean imagine that's that's you know we can't get out I can't get out with two kids without destroying half of the house from the house to get in in the car and drive three minutes okay that's a they weren't nobody special in the sense of they weren't ministers anointed men of God they weren't these these some high profile high flyer people spiritually or physically or financially they were just common people common farmers common people in the village of Ukraine that nobody knows or will, will know but they were committed to God and God took their commitment and blessed them generationally and even that going back to my great-grandfather who served God and I believe he was in jail but I know for sure that he was uh, I, that he was a martyr for Christ he gave his life for the sake of the gospel generational blessing belongs to those who commit their life Bel belongs to those who have longevity with God forgot to read you a verse let's go to Luke chapter 14 uh, chapter 14 chapter 1 verse 13 says this but the angel said don't be afraid Zacharias God has heard your prayer your your uh, your wife Elizabeth will give you son go to verse 15 for he John John the Baptist will be great in the eyes of the Lord if you look in the story of John and you think like John became this mighty prophet of God just out of nowhere Jesus called him the greatest prophet but no John was standing on the shoulders of a lifelong commitment longevity service in God's house he was standing on the shoulders of his parents we actually don't even see anything special about his parents that that stood out to be that they were maybe some kind of a high priest or they were anything special Bible says that it was his turn to serve in the house of God so he was amongst many other priests it doesn't say that he was a high priest or anything of that sort he was just a common priest he was a he was of a Aaron's tribe and so that was his way of serving God so was this so was this Elizabeth and he was just doing this week in week out month in month out a year in year out just committed to the lot that was thrown in his life but he was faithful in it 
I want to encourage you today especially those of you parents and those of you that are not parents you will be remember this if you want to pass on a generational blessing in your life you got to stay committed to God through a long time through your lifetime we look in the story of David God has blessed Solomon greatly I mean wisdom we're talking about riches fame I mean all of those great things you you would think that this was because of Solomon no it wasn't God actually clearly said because of your father David as a matter of fact if you read after Solomon and next I don't know probably a dozen of kings or I don't, don't quote me on the number even when they screwed up God Bible says God shown the mercy because of their father David generational blessing listen I want to encourage you today if nothing else changes in your life in your personal life remember you're laying a foundation for a generational blessing come on come on come on And the last part that I want to encourage you with is that verse verse 13 uh, verse 13 angel says God has heard your prayer God hears our prayers I don't know what are you praying for what are you believing for what are you expecting from God but God hears your prayers it might take 10 years 20 years 25 years 30 years whatever it is it might be already past the time that you were expecting it but God hears your prayers your prayers don't have an expiration point your prayers are not the prayers that if I didn't get it if I don't get it by Friday then well I just wasted praying Monday through Thursday then those prayers were in vain listen not one prayer goes unnoticed by God God has his timing God has his uh, pace and God will fulfill every prayer you pray God will make things prayer will make things that were unable things that you were not able to do make it become able God will make things that you weren't able to accomplish he will make you be able to accomplish them God has his speed God has his grace and even if it's past the time that you think you should have had this that or the other listen when God does something it will propel you and you will recover even those years that you thought you were lost you will have great miracle listen if you have experience in delay in your life it's not when you will receive your miracle it's not just going to be a miracle it's going to be a grand miracle it's going to be a miracle that everybody around you would know that God has visited you it's going to be a miracle that that the Bible says that people were in awe of the of the Lord's doing in their life God hears your prayer for he will be exceedingly great in the eyes of the Lord that's going to be your answer it will be great it's not going to be just good it's not going to be just okay it will be great the longer it's delayed the more it's cooking amen God has his perfect timing